Donald Trump is elected the 47th president of the United States and Jimmy Kimmel's crying on national TV. What's going on everyone? Brickhouse here with another video. And before I get started, just want to thank everybody for tuning in, both returning viewers and new viewers. And if you haven't yet, you can support this channel, support the work that I'm doing by uh, smashing that like button, give me a thumbs up. Also, uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe. And before you go, please leave a comment before you leave. Now, on to the video. Late night meltdown. Jimmy Kimmel tears up. Covert lectures America for rejecting Kamala. Kamala. Or as I like to say, Kamala, like Kamala the Ugandan giant, former WWE wrestler. <laughs> This is from Breitbart.com, David Ng. Late night comedians Jimmy Kimmel and Stephen Colbert experienced emotional meltdowns Wednesday in their first broadcast after President-elect Donald Trump defeated Kamala Harris in the presidential election. Kimmel held back tears in what was clearly a difficult show for the comedian who has devoted much airtime in recent years to bashing Trump and his supporters. Well... I meme, therefore I am, posted this over on X, and let's uh, take a look for ourselves, shall we? Let's be honest, it was a terrible night last night. It was a terrible night for women, for children, for the hundreds of thousands of, of hardworking immigrants who make this country go. It was a hard night for women, children, and the hundred thousands of immigrants that work, work in this country. Um... Jimmy, dude, there's a difference between an immigrant that comes here legally and an immigrant that comes here illegally. It's a sad night for the illegal immigrants because they know what's coming. It's not a sad night for the people that have come to this country legally. And as for women and children, uh, for women and children, nothing is really going to change. Besides that, uh, if they're a working mom, they're going to have more money in their pocket. And to be able to provide more for their children. So let's cut the crap, shall we? Um, for health care, for our climate, for science... So journalism. Journalism. Hmm. Well, after this election, I'd say um, the major players, CBS, ABC, NBC, um, they're crapping themselves right now. Donald Trump just proved you don't have to go to the CNNs, the Fox Newses, the, M the MSNBCs, the NBCs, the CBSs, the ABCs to reach people. You can go to podcasters, Andrew Schultz, Joe Rogan, and have conversations, which is one of the reasons I think won this Trump the election is he... He listened to his son, Barron, and I think Barron was behind this. Barron's the one that told him, go to Rogan, go to Andrew Schultz, do these podcasts, which showed a different side of Donald Trump to millions and millions of people. Not the nastiness of ABC, David Muir, or CBS. Let's continue. For justice, for free speech, it was a terrible night. For justice, for free speech. Well, if it wasn't for what Elon had done by purchasing Twitter, um, the election might have turned out differently. Because a lot of things that were brought out on Twitter probably would have been suppressed. For poor people, for the middle class, for seniors who rely on Social Security, for our allies in Ukraine. Our allies in Ukraine who we've given billions and billions of dollars and what's it done for us? What's our benefit? Care to explain that one, Jimmy? 
for NATO or for NATO. Trump's going to make NATO pay their fair share. I hate using that term because that's a term that's usually used by Democrats when talking about billionaires and taxes. They've got to make the billionaires and the corporations pay their fair share. But in this case, it's, it's good to use it because NATO, except for the first term of Trump, hadn't really paid us the money that they were supposed to pay us. The truth. Let's. Now, let's go to Stephen Colbert, shall we? On CBS, Stephen Colbert took an angrier approach to the election outcome. Let's see what Mr. Colbert had to say. This is from Tom Elliott over on X. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> it happened again. After a bizarre and vicious campaign fueled by a desperate need not to go to jail, Donald Trump has won the 2024 election. It wasn't fueled by a desperate need to not go to jail. How many times did Trump say, I don't have to do this? I could be on a beach somewhere. I could be playing golf. I don't have to do this. I want to do this because I believe in this country. And listen to his crowd. Boo! Almost like you rehearsed that. <laughs> I am sure they probably did. The deep shock and sense of loss is enormous. Okay, but let's look at the bright side. This way, at least there'll be a peaceful transfer of power. <laughs> Mike Pence, Ali Ali oxen free. <laughs> All day yesterday, I was walking around proudly wearing my I voted sticker. Today, I wore my I am questioning my fundamental belief in the goodness of humanity sticker. Now, they give those out. They give those out yeah. at the bake sale yeah. Yeah. right outside. Uh, now, as a late night host, people often say to me, come on, part of you has got to want Trump to win because he gives you so much material to work with. No, no. <laughs> no one tells the guy who cleans the bathroom, wow, you must love it when someone has explosive <laughs> diarrhea. There's so much material for you to work with. Come on. Now... You understand that? That good? I wish, you wish, so many of us wish this hadn't happened, but that is not for us to decide. This is a democracy. No, this is not a democracy there, Stephen. It's a republic. A representative republic or a constitutional republic. Take your pick. We are not a democracy. That's democracy with a capital duh. And in this democracy, the majority has spoken, and they said they don't care that much about democracy. Um, the people have spoken, and the majority have said they believe in our republic. They believe in freedom of speech. They are anti-censorship. They are anti-war. They want to see this country become prosperous again. And I want to take a moment to congratulate Kamala Harris on Tim Walls on running an amazing 107-day campaign. An amazing 107-day campaign. Let's think about that. What were some of Kamala Harris's policy stances? All she had was joy. And rolling out every celebrity she could think of to her rallies to trick the people into going to the rallies because they think that there's going to be a concert. Not to mention the people she would bus in from other locations to her rallies. Uh, remember, Beyonce, I think it was put out there somewhere that she got paid $10 million to show up at one of Kamala's rallies. Just saying. You know, come on. That was extraordinary. Right out of the gate. Mm -hmm. They hit it right out of the gate. 
You know, the Democrats try tried a different chapter in their playbook. You know, with 2020, it was, let's keep Joe in the basement. And in 2024, it was, we need to see if we can get this person elected with people not finding out who she is by shortening the window for her to be out campaigning. How many days did she go without doing an interview or a press conference? And when she did do them, they were disasters. Presley, I hope they stay in touch. I know they're really good at texting. <laughs> so there you have it. Um, Jimmy Kimmel, Stephen Colbert. Oh, I can't forget about Seth Myers. Seth Myers. Seth Myers, I don't have video of this, unfortunately. He opened his monologue saying, it was a privilege to be here with you, to not feel alone. We're not going to let anything take the joy away, even, even when we're talking about things that are not particularly joyful. So he did take a different approach. What I would say, just by reading this, is a more subdued approach. But I don't have any sympathy for Jimmy Kimmel or Stephen Colbert. I think it was proven when they were taken off the air during COVID that they're not really missed if, they're, if their shows aren't on TV. So, like I said in my previous video with The View, or asked, who watches The View? Does anybody actually watch The View? Does anybody actually watch these late night TV shows? I mean, back in the day when you had Carson and Letterman and even Jay Leno, Conan O'Brien, that's when those shows were funny, entertaining. Now, they're just train wrecks. So there you go. Just thought I'd drop this one in on you guys. Um, tell me what you think in the comment section down below. So definitely before you leave, leave a comment. And while you're at it, please take the time to smash that like button. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button uh, and subscribe to the channel. It's the best way you can support the channel. It's a free thing you can do. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss a video. And with that, I will see you guys later.